Dear viewers on NURSAT satellite channel and Telelumiere TV, good evening. Today we have a special interview with His Excellency, the Ambassador and Archbishop Giovanni Pietro Dal Toso, the resident ambassador of the Holy See in Jordan. Good evening. Good Your evening to Excellency. you. Good evening to you. Your Excellency, when we mentioned a resident ambassador of Jordan, that exactly falls under your scope of work and uh, responsibility. What exactly does it, it mean? Yeah. yeah. No, you know, I am uh, the Holy See has uh, diplomatic relationships with Jordan since uh, ninety four, mm -hmm. so uh, almost thirty year, years. Uh, until now, until my, my uh, appointment. The, um, the nuncio in Iraq mm -hmm. was also covering Jordan, yes. uh, residing in Baghdad. Mm -hmm. residing in, in Jordan. Now, um, uh, in my case, I am uh, the first resident nuncio here in Jordan. That, that means I am always here. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am a resident here in Jordan uh, because as you know, Jordan is, is, a, is a country which is uh, becoming more and more important in the Middle East because of its, its mm -hmm. stability, especially, and because uh, of the presence of, of many other embassies. So the Holy See decided to have a resident ambassador here. Also, this I must say, because of the personal friendship uh, uh, Pope Francis to the King uh, Abdu Abdullah II. Mm -hmm. So the, all these also in order to stress the importance of Jordan to the Holy See mm -hmm. and uh, this is why I, I was appointed. Here and we are a, happy for that decision. I am very <laughs> happy at that decision. Uh, when I was told, uh, uh, proposed to come here, I tell, to, tell, told immediately yes. For, because of several reasons. Well, Jordan is a biblical uh, country. Mm -hmm. Jordan uh, has uh, different rights. Jordan is important in the Middle East because it's, it is uh, like becoming more and more the center of many <coughs> happenings here in the, in the region. Yeah. So I was, I was uh, of course, and mm -hmm. I'm still very happy to be here. <laughs> and we are too. <laughs> Yeah. Your Excellency, you yeah. understand the importance of media yeah. and its role in conveying the messages of the Church. You represent the Holiness Pope Francis, who uh, direct messages to the Universal Church. How do you see the role of the local Church in conveying these messages in our society and region? But, uh, you know, uh, first of all, uh, I, I say nothing new, but uh, it is important for us even for us in the church, to understand we are in a society where media are more and more important, yeah. where are determining, uh, uh, for example, the public opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so the importance of media and I would also say of social media is, is growing. Yeah. Uh, if you think, for example, this is very easy to see in the attitudes of our young people. Mm -hmm. Everyone uses his iPhone. The iPhone is becoming the way how they are informed about life, about the world, about yes. the neighbor. Yeah. So uh, this is, I mean, just, uh, just a very concrete example, mm -hmm. uh, just on the line how important it is that we are also present in the media. So mm -hmm. this is the reason because I'm happy that here in the Middle East we have several uh, medias. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have Nursat, we have Telenumia, yeah. we have in, here in Jordan Abuna.org. Uh, because the point is also, and now I'm, I'm concretizing this here for the Middle East, we ha to have something in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, of course it is understandable the Holy Father speaks in Italian or in English or in Spanish, yeah. but uh, we have not, the, the, we need to have a bridge to the people here, yeah, so some East, something, yeah. someone speaking Arabic, Arabic. for them. Yeah. So this is uh, in this in this sense the the presence of media here in the Middle East is more important, mm -hmm. exactly yeah. because of the language. Yes. So I'm very happy. We have also Radio Maria here, mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm correct. Yes. We have the agency also of the Patriarchate. So yes. it is very important that we uh, that we are present and that we 
foster this presence uh, in, the med in the world of the media. Yes in the Arabic one. So then that is, it is also a question mm -hmm. which is uh, to be studied and to be uh, possibly also that we can do something on that, um, that we also uh, pass in a certain sense that we are able to transfer our message mm -hmm. also to Arabic medias, which are not uh, Catholic or Christians. Yes. Uh, because the public opinion needs to know what the Pope is saying. Yes. Uh, and uh, the, what we are now living in this region, the conflict is uh, the very concrete example how important it is that everyone, not just Catholics, not just Christians, hear the voice of the Pope mm -hmm. calling for peace, calling yes. for reconciliation, yes. calling for stopping the war. Yeah. Yes. Having taken responsibilities in Jordan this year and given your prior background that started in May of 1996 in the Caritas Council, you have been uh, specializing in providing aid to those in need with a focus on refugees, as well as being appointed deputy in jo June 2004 then taking the role of Secretary General of the Pontifical Council in 2010 till it dissolved in 2017 and then from that time till 2022 you were appointed as a Secretary at Joints of Propaganda Fight. Putting that into consideration, how do you envision the resolution of conflicts and wars that we are witnessing in our present time, especially in the Holy Land between Palestine and Israel? Yes, this is a big question. And um, you, you mentioned my background. My background was, uh, I was for 20 years in the Vatican working uh, with humanitarian assistance yes. and so on. Especially with the refugees. With the refugees and um, I was uh, I was also dealing with the questions on the, of the war in Syria and so Lebanon. Uh, and Lebanon. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I I discover more and more also for the present time. What we can, of course, do is to support with uh, humanitarian help, so that the church can show his compa its compassion mm -hmm. in a very concrete way, uh, helping the people. And this we are doing also in this moment uh, for, for Gaza. Uh, and yes. uh, not just because we have people, uh, as you know, uh, which are not just Christians, but also Muslims within the compound of the Catholic Church there. Uh, but, for example, here from Jordan, we have a, a, a project of uh, Caritas Georgian in mm -hmm. cooperation with Hashemai Charity in order to bring help there. I mean, this is a very concrete way how we can say, in facts, yes. not just with words, yes. in, with facts, that uh, the Church is attentive to human dignity, mm -hmm. to human dignity. This is what, are we do, what we are doing concretely. Then, of course, there are, which are, and this is very important, that the Holy Father and the Holy See uh, also voices the necessity of mm -hmm. peace and the reconciliation. The voice of the Pope is an important voice at the level of the international community. And uh, I hope that he will be heard, not just uh, that, that, his, uh, that he, uh, his, um, his words, which are also very clear, that he may be he heard by the people. No? And then, you see, I always say um, what we can do is also to form the conscience of people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we, cannot, we will not have peace if we have not people ready to look for peace. We will not have people, uh, peace if we have not people who are ready also 
to sacrifice themselves mm -hmm. for, at, for yes. this aim of peace. Uh, we had, because, you know, uh, humankind, uh, uh, mankind, excuse me, mankind had always war during the whole history. This is nothing new. Mm -hmm. But we had also always people of goodwill looking for peace. So I think it is a very important uh, task for the church to educate people in order to look for peace. Yes. And uh, for us Christians, of course, mm -hmm. the very important way how to educate to peace is the, uh, is, uh, is the faith. Because uh, Jesus Christ said of himself, I am the peace. Yes. Uh, so the, the more we as Christians know Jesus Christ, the more we understand through him the way how to realize peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So looking for peace and people. Yeah. <laughs> the, the people who is a peacemaker. Yeah. We have to enforce them, the, uh, uh, as you said, to do peace. Your Excellency, the document on human fraternity uh, is an important historical document. Are there tools to measure the success of this document, what are its prominent results globally or in the region? Yes, uh, first of all, I would stress what you said. This is an historical document. No. Uh, this is the first document of that kind where um, the, the Pope as representative of the, Holy, of the Catholic Church and representatives yeah. of, of uh, uh, Muslim... Um, um, authorities undersigned such. A, this is already in itself a big yeah. achievement, yeah. first of all. Secondly, uh, our experience is that such documents have normally not at the, an immediate result because they need to be received at the different levels, not mm -hmm. just at the level of the <coughs> authorities, but uh, they, they have to be uh, received and uh, adapted also at the different levels of the population. What I know uh, about is that there were several meetings and encounters and congresses in, for studying such documents. Mm -hmm. This is the first step that we can understand what this document implies and then that we can uh, try then to, uh, to apply it concretely. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I would say another thing which we should never forget, especially here in the Middle East. We have here a uh, 2,000, uh, no, not 2,000, uh, uh, 1,600 history of coexistence of Muslims and Christians. The, the, we should never forget mm -hmm. that we have already a big experience of that. Yes. That this is not just a paper. I mean, uh, as, the, as a document is always very important mm -hmm. in order to, to, in order to clarify something. But we 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 have already such a long time of of living together. Living together, yeah. And I must say to you, uh, here in Jordan, I discovered not just the fact that we are uh, we're living together, Christians and Muslims, but there are many cooper much cooperation among yes. them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let us see. This is very very important. Let us see this positive, concrete approach in concrete life we already have. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But this uh, document, uh, it's uh, very important um, in, uh, when it's uh, signed uh, for the Christians to see that the Gulf area, they are uh, helping or they yeah. are uh, uh, helping or uh, they are looking to other people yeah. who is in need in yeah. the in our region yeah. and especially what we are facing these times yeah. from the, the yeah. conflict between Israel and Palestine they wanted the Christian people they wanted this document 
uh, about human fraternity Fraternity. to be uh, uh, like uh, translated in in something uh, realistic and they can see. No, no, no. But, um, That's the, their expectations. This is the expectation, but uh, I think uh, uh, I think you see. Uh, let us be also very uh, attentive to the words. The fact that uh, this uh, document is on human fraternity mm-hmm. helps us to rediscover that we have to go back to our common humanity. And this is the way how we can also solve conflicts. Yeah. We, have a common, have, we have a common humanity, that means we are brothers and sisters. And I mean, in every family among brothers and sisters, there can be some tensions. But in every family, we know at the end, we are a family. Mm-hmm. And we have yes. to stay together because we have we have a bond of a bond of love each other to each other. Uh, so the, you, the, this document on human fraternity should help every one of us to discover exactly this human tie be among us that we are brothers and sisters. And on that basis, we have we can also resolve our conflicts. If we consider ourselves just enemies, it is logic mm-hmm. that we will have yes. war. But if we consider ourselves brothers and sisters, then we can find uh, a way how to get out from the tensions and to find a way to be together. The, yes. For me, the big, to, uh, the big achievement of this document is exactly that we can, uh, we can point out to this common humanity. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Christian churches in the region are experiencing now great sorrow and pain. And preserving this uh, Christian presence in the midst of this crisis uh, becomes a significant challenge. So what is your vision for this reality? You know, uh, the, the question of the presence of the Christians in the Middle East yes. is, uh, is a long uh, question. I mean, long in that sense, this is a, a preoccupation of the Holy See and of mm-hmm. the whole church yes. uh, since uh, many years. Um, my presence here as an uncio as a, uh, is also an expression of the preoccupation of the Holy See for the Christians in the Middle East. (coughs) Exactly because a presence of the Nuncio here can guarantee better also the relationship uh, with Rome and with the Universal Church. Said these, I have to say, first of all, Christians in the Middle East are not just important. They are much more than important because we, I am, I'm speaking now as Italian, mm-hmm. as, a, <laughs> as a Christian from the Western, from the West, we come from you. We come from you. Mm. We come from you. That means we have here the origins the of origin our Christian yeah. faith. And this is not just a, a big theory. This is <laughs> a concrete reality. Uh-huh. Jesus was here. The first uh, Christian communities were here. The gospel went out to the whole world from okay. here. Yes. We need the Christians here exactly because we are coming from here. Mm-hmm. All Christians from the whole world are coming from here. Uh, so the, the, the Christians in the Middle East should be, first of all, aware of this big reality. Yes. Secondly, from that, I say always, it is a vocation to be Christian in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. It is not easy, yes. as it is not easy for everyone, but to be Christian in the Middle East is a vocation exactly because of this special place you have for the Catholic, for the Christian faith. Yes. Um, be aware of this vocation is something what can help the Christians in the Middle East to stay faithful to their place. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
a third point which is for me important we have here in Jordan or also on the other in Palestine the other side mm -hmm. of the Jordan we have many places where Jesus, Jesus. was there yeah many places where um, f uh, happenings of the Old Testament took place yes. and so on yeah mm -hmm. Uh, but they are not just stones. Stones. We 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 cannot just consider these places as stones. We need a living community yes. who can show what is Christian life, so that so that uh, this big heritage is not just for archaeologists, mm -hmm. but is for Christians, pilgrims coming here. Yes. So. Uh, all this I would like really to stress, uh, uh, and th all this is part exactly of what I said of the vocation of the of the churches in the east of the Christians in the east the vocation to be here, and uh, let me just finish also uh, this answer, telling uh, you know also that our Western churches, our Christians in the West, they are very aware of that. And uh, you know also very well how um, they are ready to help yes. here in this region. And uh, let me quote also a very important uh, fact of the last weeks. Uh, because we had here a visit of a big group from a Western country. Mm -hmm. And they were not, not, uh, not uh, very sure should we come should we not come because, ah, of, the because of the situation yes. but at the end they decided to come and you mm -hmm. know why because they said our christian brothers in the middle east they don't need us just in a peaceful time mm -hmm. they need us exactly because they are yeah. in this situation of conflict and so and they came exactly because of this in order to show mm -hmm. their proximity to the Christians here in the Middle East, exactly in a situation of difficulty. Yes. Uh, so this I would like to tell you uh, and to our, to the people uh, mm -hmm. who are now uh, uh, looking at us, mm -hmm. in order that they are aware, uh, Western Christians are interested into the into what's happening to the churches here. Yeah, especially these times, yes, we have the, times, the, yeah. the conflicts with, uh, yeah. in Palestine. Yeah. And uh, I can now sense that the people outside or the people in the West, uh, uh, world, Western world, they are more aware about the Palestinian uh, yes. uh, case and the I conflicts. Would say yes. yes, I would say yes. Yeah. Uh, because of the media and the social media and what's happening, yeah. it's all, all over the internet now, yeah. uh, globally. So uh, we feel they are uh, more aware about also the presence of uh, the Christians here and what they are suffering. Because, you know, a lot of uh, people here, they immigrate outside yeah. the, the country and left their houses and their homes because of these uh, situations. Anyway, thank you for your answer, uh, Your Excellency. His Holiness, the Pope, uh, received re representatives yesterday yeah. of uh, hostages and detainees, including Palestinian prisoners. Uh, does it, the Vatican, um, see itself as closer to the people and capable of playing a role in solving uh, the issue of prisoners? and uh, hostages as a step forward initiatives towards initiatives that encourage sitting at the negotiation table. Um, you see, uh, I, as I said before, the, the, the Holy Father spoke several times about uh, yes. the situation. Also our uh, Secretary of State, Cardinal Parolin, sp spoke several times on that. Be uh, beyond of that, there is a, a big, um, I would say, pressure of the Holy See in the diplomatic channels, trying to bring forward this uh, idea of, of peace and negotiation at this moment of stopping the war. Yes. The, 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 
the Holy Father was very clear ten years, ten days ago in his uh, Angelus, uh, calling for a clear stop of the war. Yes. Uh, with these words, so, um, so there is there is a. Um, I, I would say that the work of the Holy See has different levels. This is at the public level, what we see. Then there is a diplomatic effort in yeah. several directions. Yeah. Um, what I can say is that we hope that, I hope that these, uh, yesterday the Holy Fathers of yes. this uh, <coughs> group of people, now uh, they are speaking of a possible uh, ceasefire yes, for cease some fire, days. Yes. So I, I hope uh, that these are signs of uh, goodwill yes. uh, in order to, to find a solution. Uh, yes. And you see, um, also what yesterday happened, so that the Pope, Pope receiving uh, this uh, these group of people, um, Maybe they, this concretely cannot solve anything for the moment. Mm -hmm. But we need signs. And this was an important sign. The, yeah. the, the, the sign that the Pope is attentive to the victims of this conflict. Because uh, we are speaking always on war, on bombardments, on, 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 and so on, of, 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 of big diplomatic efforts. But at the end, we should look at the people down there yes. suffering. Uh, this, is, this is what is moving us, or especially. Yes. We, this is especially moving us, the, pop, the fact that we have people suffering because... Uh, because of yeah. what we are seeing, yes. no, and uh, and w w w yes. Uh, actually, it's a, a good gesture from from the Pope to meet with them, yeah. uh, to uh, to feel with their pain. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to uh, uh, that can he feel his yeah. their pain and their and, suffering? And this yes. can help the responsible all over the world all, yes, to, to look. That. Yes. At the suffering of the people, yes. this is the sign, yes. which is important. Oh. Yeah. That's why he said stop yeah. the war. And it's really painful and horrible what's happening there. The press office affiliated with the Apostolic See announced on Thursday the itinerary of Pope Francis' visit to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates from the 1st to 3rd of December. The visit cons uh, coincides with the conference of the parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Additionally, the Pope will inaugurate the religious pavilion at the Expo Dubai. How was this visit arranged at this particular time? Your Excellency. Yeah. No. You know, uh, the the visit has nothing to do with uh, with the conflict we are now living in. Uh, mm -hmm. The visit has a has a completely other aim, uh, which is to express the preoccupation of the Pope, especially of him, and uh, for for um, for the question of the climate changes and uh, what all the questions involved with that. So uh, the decision was taken before. The war began because this uh, horrible attack on the seventh of October, yes. and um, um, I would say we have to, we have to uh, distinguish uh, the, the the two the two questions. Uh, what I what I find uh, important is that we have again. A visit of the Pope to a count to Arab, an Arab country. Mm -hmm. um, we had in these ten years of pontificate several visits to to Arab countries, mm -hmm. also here in Jordan. And we have now another one. Yes. So this is uh, le let us take this also as a sign of attention of the Holy Father for the Arabic world. Yeah, yeah. it says we can yeah, recognize yeah. now. Yeah. Um, as a second uh, visit, 
but it came during this uh, yes, situation yeah. and the people starting uh, to uh, you know questioning questioning why this visit now and uh, no but this um, has really nothing to do yeah, with the conflict this, uh, this was uh, foreseen before and uh, and uh, this is also another level, let me say, because this is a question uh, concerning the, the whole world. Yes, yeah. And uh, this is, a, this is a, a summit concerning all climate, countries yeah. of the world and not just the countries of the Middle East. So yeah. this is I'm important to note. Important I'm to talking note, yeah. about the climate change, yeah. which is good and important for the yeah. whole world. Uh, Your Excellency, as we approach the Christmas season and the time of nativity, that final message would you like to convey to the viewers of Nursa TV channel and viewers? You know, uh, uh, so you're putting me this question. I have <laughs> to go back to, uh, to St. John Paul II. Mm -hmm. When he wants for one uh, message on on the on Christmas, this was a war time, even at that time I, uh -huh. I remember, and he said, "Stop in front of the child, stop wow. in front of the child." Mm -hmm. So we have this child Jesus now. Who's, uh, who we celebrate his uh, nativity. But let us recognize in the face of Jesus, in the little Jesus, in the child Jesus, let us recognize the many children who are suffering all over the world. Yes. And let us say, stop in front of the children, stop in front of the child. This is what I would say now when we approach nativity. This is not just a fact we should be uh, better or we should be good because the, 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 the Jesus Christ is coming. But that this may bring every one of us to a really real conversion. Stop in front of the child. Stop every kind of evil in front of, in front of the child in front of this child Jesus who's coming for our salvation. That's really amazing. I uh, really am uh, in touch with the <laughs> what you said. So we appreciate your time for the interview. Thank you a lot, Your Excellency. And uh, you, dear viewers, we have just uh, in concluded a special interview with uh, His Excellency Ambassador Giovanni Pietro del Toso the resident ambassador of the Vatican in Jordan. Till we meet again, God bless you all. Thank you.